ki jayane kalla pravishtam vishnu par ashtara shtata shmar chala bhakti vedanta narayan gusai maharaj shri guru dev ki jay nitanda pravishtam vishnu par ashtara shtata shmar chala bhakti vedanta narayan gusai maharaj shri guru dev ki jay nitanda pravishtam vishnu par ashtara shtata shmar chala bhakti vedanta vaman gusai maharaj ki jay nitanda pravishtam vishnu par ashtara shtata shmar Shila Bhakti Viranta Swami Maharaj Shila Prabhupar ki jai. Nitala Pravishtam Vishnu Pada Shatara Shatashmar Shila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Gosai Maharaj ki jai. Nitala Pravishtam Vishnu Pada Shatara Shatashmar Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Gosai Prabhupar ki jai. Nitala Pravishtam Mahabhagavat Shila Gokshara Svabhaji Maharaj ki jai. Nitala Pravishtam Shila Satcharanda Bhakti Vinod Thakur ki jai. Nitala Pravishta Vaishnava Sarva Bhoma Shla Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj ki jai. Shri Rupanu Gauriya Guru Varga ki jai. Shri Rupa Sanatan Bhattaragunath Shri Jeeva Gopal Patadashagunath. Shara Gosai Prabhu ki jai. Shri Surup Damodar Rai Ramanandari Shri Gopar Shraddha Vrinda ki jai. Nama Chai Shla Hairas Thakur ki jai. Prem Se Koho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Adaita Gadadar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Shikshetta Mandala, Gora Mandala, Vraja Mandala, Mathura Vrindavan, Dham ki jai. Sarva Avishta Pradatta Giri Raj Maharaj ki jai. Shri Radha Kun Shama Kun ki jai. Shri Muna Devi Ganga Devi ki jai. Shri Tulsi Maharani Vrinda Devi ki jai. Shri Bhakti Devi ki jai. Shri Purnamasi Yoga Maya ki jai. Shri Gopeshwar Mahadev ki jai. Shri Harinam Sankirtan ki jai. Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda ki jai. Samavata Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Shri Nitae Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Gaur. Hari Bo, Krishna Shil Prabhu, and Rup Manjari Didi Tandabat Pranams. This is, a, this is a typo that happens to me all the time. I think it might be automatic spell correction. But yeah, don't hate Krishna. We should love Krishna. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's happened to me a bunch of times until I taught my computer Hare Krishna. The word Hari. All right. Um, so the first kirtan, or not first kirtan, whatever the kirtan. Um, we're gonna do this one, Ashraya Koriya Bandung by Shri Sanatan Das. Taking shelter of Shri Guru, please worship his lotus feet, by which, O oh brother, the wealth of prem for Shri Krishna is attained. To deliver the living entities, the son of Nanda Maharaj, Shri Hari, has manifested in this world by accepting the form of Shri Guru. Know that Guru and Krishna are one in their glories. Accept in your heart the order of Shri Guru as the complete truth. Whoever in true knowledge has faith in the words of Shri Guru certainly attains um, residence in Shri Vrajbhumi. One with, whom, uh, one with whom Shri Guru is pleased does not become worried by any obstacle whatsoever. If Krishna becomes angry with you, then Guru can save you. But if Guru becomes angry, then even Krishna cannot save you. Guru is mother, Guru is father, and Guru is lord and master. Without Shri Guru, there is no other shelter in this world. Never consider Shri Guru to be an ordinary human being and never hear any criticism of him. Never look upon the face of one who criticizes Shri Guru. Do not go to any place where, where criticism of Shri Guru occurs. If you ever apparently, uh, if you ever see apparently apparent behavior in Shri Guru, still do not neglect him at any time. Just like in the verse, um, what is it? Drishtai svabhava janatara vapushashtra dosha prakritata miha bhakta janasa pashat. One whose devotion remains fixed at the lotus feet of Shri Guru holds great power to deliver the universe. Worship the lotus feet of such a Guru, O brother, as they destroy all suffering. I take upon my head in adoration the feet of one who always worships the lotus feet, sorry, sorry, I, I take upon my head in adoration the feet 
of one who always worships the lotus feet of Sri Guru. Aspiring within the heart to attain Sri Guru's lotus feet, Sanatan Das makes this prayer to him. Since this kirtan is so long, I think I'm just going to sing it in one go. Ash, ash, So we can sing it together, huh? Ashaya Kori Avanto Shri Guru Chara Shri Guru Chara Jaha Hoi Te Mile Bhai Krishna Premada Ji Mera Nistar Alaghi Nanda Suta Hari Bhuvane Prakasha Pano Guru Rupado Maya Guru Krishna Eka Kori Jana Guru Agya Hrite Sabha Satya Kori Mana Satya Gyana Guru Satya Gyana Guru Vakya Jahara Vishpas Avashya Tahara Hoi Vraja Bhumi Vasa Jar Prati Guru Deva Ana Parasana Kono Vigneshe Nahi Hoya Vasana Guru Rushta Hoyle Krishna Rushta Hoyle Guru Raghi Bare Pare Guru Rushta Hoyle Krishna Raghi Bare Nare Guru Mata Guru Pita Guru Ana Pati Guru Vigneshe Guru Bina e Sangsare Nahi Aragati Guru Ke Manusha Gyana Koro Kokon Guru Ninta Kabo Karne Na Koro Shabana Guru Nintu Ke Ramukhe Guru Nintu Ke Ramukha Kabo Na Heribe Jata Hoi Guru Ninta Tata Na Chai गुरुर मृक्रिया जादे देखो हो को कौन ताताति अवाग्या नहीं कर पता चाना गुरु पर पर मेरा है जारा निश्चा बाते जगत तारी ते शेधारे महाशक्ति है न गुरु पर पर म कोरो हो बंदाना जहाँ हुए ते गुचे भाई साकल जंत्राना गुरु पर पर मानेता जे करे बंदान शिरे दोरी बंदी आमिता रचराना श्री गुरु चराना पर मारे ते करिया शर श्री गुरु बंदाना करे सनातना दासा श्री गुरु
just see who's all there. Dandava Pranams, Sudevi Didi, and Rohini Dulal Prabhu. Dandava Pranams, Haribo. <clears throat> so this is the final article of this book by Nitilal Pravishto Mishnupad Ashtar Ashtar Bhakti Pamur Puri Goswami Maharaj. So may he bless us that we be able to follow these instructions that he's giving us in this book about being careful of Vaishnava Parad. Now we're going to learn about Guru Aparad, spiritual suicide. <laughs> Let me just put this Madanga down one second. Uh, I have to unplug. Okay, let me check the volume is still working. Okay, it is. Looks like my internet's a little bit choppy today, though. Okay. Srila Kaviraj Goswami movingly describes the disappearance of Srila Madhavendra Puri and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. At that time, one of his disciples, Ramachandra Puri, saw that his guru was chanting the holy name and weeping, crying out, Mathura Painu, which means, I could not attain Mathura. Madhavendra Puri was actually exhibiting symptoms of Vipralamba Pav, a mood of intense separation. Ramachandra Puri was by nature a fault finder, and consequently, um, he, could not, uh, he could not receive Sri Guru's grace. Although he was Madhavendra Puri's disciple, his vision was warped, and he saw his guru as a mundane person. In utter disregard of the transcendental status of his guru, he said, If you are full of transcendental bliss, what are you crying about? You should be absorbed in meditating on Brahman. Madhavendra Puri was enraged. Get out, you sinful rascal. I don't want to see your face. Um, then, he began, then he began to lament. Oh, Krishna, I could not reach you, nor your abode, Mathura. I am dying in unhappiness, and this rascal comes to give me even more pain. I am dying without your shelter, and now this fool comes to instruct me about Brahman. Ramachandra Puri was rejected by his guru, and material desires gradually appeared in his heart. Ramachandra Puri had the audacity to offer instructions to his guru, a Mahabhagavat, who personified Krishna Prem. He failed to understand that his guru was immersed in Viraha, a separation from Mathura, the transcendental abode of Krishna. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada writes in his commentary, Realizing that his disciple was a fool, Madhavendra Puri withdrew his connection and any responsibility towards him. <clears throat> Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur elaborates on the meaning of the word vasana, or desire, in his Amrita Pravaha Bhashya commentary. Here, desire indicates attachment to knowledge and analysis, which ultimately leads to Vaishnav Aparad. Whoa. The real cause of Ajiva's misfortune is his offenses against Guru and Vaishnav. Rejected by his guru, Ramachandra Puri went to visit Mahaprabhu in the Gambir temple in Puri. While waiting, he saw ants crawling outside of Mahaprabhu's door. Without thinking, Ramachandra Puri said, Last night there was sugar candy here, and therefore ants are everywhere. This sannyasi is attached to sense gratification. After saying this, Ramachandra Puri got up and left. He made the effort to see the Lord. Uh, he made the effort to see the Lord every day, and yet he could not stop finding faults in the Lord's character. Further, he would publicly broadcast his criticisms. Reports of Ramachandra's criticism against the Lord reached him. Nevertheless, because Ramachand because Ramachandra Puri was a god brother of his guru Ishvara Puri, Mahaprabhu would always offered him respect, accepting the criticism of his eating habits. Sorry. Accepting the criticism of his eating habits, Mahaprabhu changed his diet. He told his servant Govinda, From now on, 
it will be a rule that it will be a rule that that I will accept only one fourth of what I've been eating of Jagannath's prasadam. If you bring any more than this, I will leave. When Govinda disclosed Mahaprabhu's self-imposed austerities to other intimate followers of the Lord, they felt as if the world had ended. That day, a Brahman came to offer Jagannath Prasadam to Mahaprabhu. Acting on Mahaprabhu's orders, Govinda accepted only one-fourth of a pot of rice and vegetables. Mahaprabhu then took only half of that amount and left the other half for Govinda. The Brahman was horrified. Seeing Mahaprabhu eating so little, the devotees were overcome with despair and stopped eating altogether. Mahaprabhu, however, or, uh, how, Mahaprabhu, however ordered Govinda and Kashishwar Pandit to beg food from somewhere else to compensate for their smaller portions of food. This continued for a few days, and finally the news reached Ramachandra Puri, who rushed to see Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu received him with due honor, offering him obeisances and a seat. Ramachandra Puri laughed and instructed the Lord, It is not the business of a sannyasi to gratify his senses. He should, fill his he should fill his belly somehow or other. I heard that you have cut down your eating by one half. I can see that you are skinny. Such dry renunciation is also not the religion, is also not the religion of a real sannyasi. A sannyasi eats only as much as necessary, but he does not try to please the senses. Mahaprabhu replied, I am just an ignorant boy and like your disciple. It is my great fortune that you instruct me. Ramachandra Puri left, and Mahaprabhu learned that the devotees were either fasting completely or had, or had reduced their eating by one half for many days. Then one day, Srila Paramananda Puri with his disciples came to meet Mahaprabhu. He humbly said to the Lord, My god brother Ramachandra Puri is by nature a critic. If you give up eating because of his criticism, what will you gain? He encourages, he encourages one to eat to his full satisfaction and then to eat more than necessary. Then after, he's, then, after he has induced one to overeat, he criticizes him, saying, You eat too much. How much money do you have? By setting a bad example for other sannyasis, you ruin their vows. It's easy to understand why you have not made any spiritual advancement. Ramachandra Puri always inquires about how others are eating and conducting their daily affairs. The two kinds of activities rejected in the scriptures constitute his daily sadhan. It is written in the Bhagavatam, one should, see, uh, one should see this world as being under the control of Krishna and neither praise nor criticize the characteristics and activities of others. One who praises or criticizes others is trapped in duality and soon deviates from the and soon deviates from the ultimate goal of life of these two rules ramachandra puri obeys the first he never praises anyone although he knows that the second is more important although he knows the second is more important he continues to criticize others shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati Prabhupada writes in his anubhashya commentary I had I wrote a question on this uh, on Facebook. I think Manjuri will remember, and I got lots of responses. But this is the point. In the Bhagavatam, we find that to not praise is the first rule, and to not criticize is the second. If the second rule is given prominence over the first, then the conclusion is that it is not so bad to praise, but it is imperative not to criticize. Ramachandra Puri observed the first rule, but he failed to adhere to the second. Srila Ramachandra Puri continued, even, uh, even where there are hundreds of good qualities, a critic does not consider any of them. Rather, he attempts to cleverly point out faults in those attributes. One should, avoid, one should avoid the example of Ramachandra Puri, but something should be said against him because he is breaking our hearts. Please, don't give up eating on the account of this fool. Sorry, on account of this fool. 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Why are all of you angry at Ramachandra Puri? He is simply stating that the standard principle of sannyas life. Why condemn him? For a sannyasi to overindulge in pleasures of the tongue is a great offense. Forgot the word is there. The duty of a sannyasi is to eat only as much as needed to keep the body and soul together. After this, the devotees fervently requested that the Lord resume his normal eating. At first, the Lord refused, but later agreed to take only half of his original portion instead of a fourth. On the days when Gadadhar Pandit, Sri Bhagavanacharya, or Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya invited him to take prasad, the Lord had no choice because he is subjected by his devotees' love for him. The Supreme Lord is like a desire tree. In order to satisfy his devotees, he submissively accepted prasadam according to the devotee's desire. The prime reason for the Lord's descent is to give pleasure to his devotees. The Supreme Lord always acts in ways which he, dream, which he deems appropriate to the time and circumstances. Kaviraj Goswami writes, Because of the absolutely independent position of divinity, Mahaprabhu sometimes acted like a common man and sometimes manifested his godly opulence. Sometimes he accepted Ramachandra Puri as his master and considered himself his servant. And other times, the Lord would see him as no more than dirt. Wow. Although it may baffle our intelligence, we must remember that God can do anything he likes, and whatever he chooses to do is always irresistibly charming. <laughs> it's always irresistibly charming. Ramachandra Puri left Nilachal after a few days for pilgrimage. His departure lifted a heavy burden from the devotees, and they were happy and relieved. They resumed enjoying prasadam to their full satisfaction. The Lord once again filled himself with the bliss of kirtan and dancing. Kaviraj Goswami concludes, If one's guru rejects him, one becomes so fallen that he commits offenses even against the Lord. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not take Ramachandra Puri's offenses personally, for the Lord considered him to be on the level of his guru. However, through his behavior, the Lord taught everyone about the result of offending the guru. This is also an interesting instruction um, that, that I get from this, is that even though Ramachandra Puri was um, an offender, like he, he acted like that with his own guru, with Madhavendra Puri, but still Mahaprabhu respected him. So no matter who the person is, if they are senior, you know, in years in bhakti, and we at least have to give them some, might not have to be from the heart, you know, but at least some formal respect. Even if the person's uh, aparadi, no matter what, just because they're senior, just externally we have to, you know, maintain that proper etiquette. Okay. On the other hand, total devotion to the guru is exemplified in Ishvara Puri. He personally served his guru Madhavendra Puri, knowing that he was a pure devotee of the Lord and that he was in his aprakat, aprakat lila or the pastime of leaving his body and entering the spiritual world. Ishwara Puri, the guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, personally waited hand and foot on Madhavendra Puri, even cleaning his stool and urine with his own hands while chanting the holy name and recounting the pastimes of Krishna for Madhavendra Puri to relish. In this way, he helped his guru to remember Krishna's holy name and pastimes at the time of his passing from this world. Pleased with Ishwar Puri, Madhavendra Puri embraced him and gave him the treasure of Krishna Prem. Ishwar Puri was filled with an ocean of ecstatic love, whereas Ramachandra Puri dried up and became a critic of everyone. Ishwar Puri received the mercy, whereas Ramachandra Puri was rebuked. They are living examples of receiving a great personality's benediction and chastisement. Madhavendra Puri reveals to the world the treasure of sublime love of Krishna 
while relishing divine love in separation, fit for Lamba. While singing the following verse, he entered into the pastimes of Sri Radha. Ai dina dayardranata he, mathura nata kadavalokya se, hridayankar aloka katvaram, daita brahma brahmyati kim karam yaha. Chaitanya Chaitanya Antya 834. We also read about this verse when we're reading the fourth chapter of Madhya Lila. Remember, there is, it's talking about only th three people could understand this verse. Um, Srimati uh, Radharani, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Madhavendra Puri. Nobody else could understand the depth of this verse. O oh, Mathuranath, when will I see you again? You are supposed to be kind to the poor. I am nothing without you. Now my heart is filled with anxiety, and I don't know what to do. There are four Vaishnav traditions. Madhavendra Puri accepted sannyas in the line of Madhva. From Madhva to Lakshmipati, Madhavendra Puri's guru, this disciplic line lacks the mood of Shingar Ras, or ero not erotic. Erotic's not the proper word here. Um, Amorous love. The spiritual mood which was prevalent in the line, sorry, the spiritual mood which was prevalent in the line was revealed in Mahaprabhu's discussion with the Tatlavadis when he was touring South India. Until Mahaprabhu's time, the popular conception of the absolute truth was Vishnu Bhakti, worshipping the Lord in the mood of awe and reverence. Madhavendra Puri sowed the seed of Shingar Ras Bhakti in the spiritual mood expressed in, in this verse. He was in the mood of Sri Radhika. After Krishna leaves Vrindavan for Mathura, Sri Radhika experiences intense separation from him. To cultivate, to cultivate her feelings is the highest mood of devotion. A devotee immersed in this ras, our mood, considers himself very poor and humble, and always begs Krishna to be kind to them. Inasmuch, uh, inasmuch as we are separated from Krishna, this mood is the most natural way to feel while performing acts of devotion. After Krishna departs from Mathura, Sri Radhika's heart is trembling with anxiety from not being able to see him. Yearning to behold his beautiful face, she laments, My love, my heart is sorrowful and agitated because I can't see you. What do I have to do? Uh, what do I have to do to see you again? You know that I am helpless. Please be kind to me. This is, uh, this is the mood expressed by Madhavendra Puri. It is the same as Mahaprabhu in the mood of Sri Radha and Vrindavan. Our preceptors have said that the root of the tree of Shingaras is Madhavendra Puri. Ishwara Puri is its sapling. Mahaprabhu is its trunk and his followers are, the, are its branches. When Mahaprabhu went to Ramuna to have darshan of the deity of Kir Chorgopinath, he recited this verse. The Lord then entered the highest state of ecstasy. Krishnadas Kaviraj comments that aside from Sri Radha, Mahaprabhu, and Madhavendra Puri, no one can relish this ras. By granding sandalwood, its aroma increases. By pondering this verse, its meaning deepens. The Kostuba gem appeared within the cream of the ocean of milk. And this verse is the cream of all poetry because it expresses the highest concept of Ras. These are Radharani's own words, and her mercy was manifest in the words of Madhavendra Puri. Only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fully relished it. No one else is even capable of understanding it. The Srimad Bhagavatam states that remembrance of Krishna's lotus feet, meaning the eagerness to serve him, is all inauspiciousness from our lives. In other words, it removes the offensive attitude of not wanting to serve, which is the only means to attract the benediction of the Lord's grace. It awakens in the jiva's heart the desire to serve the Lord. Through service, he is freed from mundane influences and becomes situated in pure goodness 
of Vishuddha Sattva. Unalloyed devotion for the Lord dawns in his heart as he relinquishes his slavery to, this materi to the material modes. He naturally becomes detached to things unrelated to Krishna and receives the highest grace. But by blaspheming Sri Guru and Vaishnavas, all is forfeited and destroyed. By offending a devotee who has taken shelter in the holy name, the taste for chanting disappears. One hovers on the material plane of consciousness, plagued by desires which bring misfortune and inauspiciousness. Haribo! Um, the real benediction for everyone has been nicely delineated in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and the discussions between Mahaprabhu and Sri Shri Rai Ramananda. Rai Ramananda says that devotion to Krishna is the ultimate realization and transcendental knowledge. Okay. Sorry, let me start over. Ramananda Rai says that devotion to Krishna is the ultimate realization and transcendental knowledge. The highest fame anyone can achieve is being a devotee of Krishna. The most precious possession is divine love for Srimati Radharani and Sri Krishna. And the greatest suffering is separation from Krishna's devotees. A lover of Krishna is the most exalted, um, the, a lover of Krishna is the most exalted liberated person. Ecstatically singing about the sublime pastimes of Radha and Krishna is the highest religion. The association of Krishna's devotees is the only real good for everyone. Krishna's transcendental name, qualities, beauty, and pastimes are the only subjects worthy of constant remembrance. And the lotus feet of Sri Radha and Krishna are the only things we should worship and adore. The only place worth living is Vrindavan. There, Radha and Krishna revel in their divine dance of love, the Ras Lila. The eternal pastimes of Radha and Krishna are the only topics worth hearing. The singing of the holy name of the divine couple is the highest form of kirtan and the most exalted form of worship. This is real culture and should be the, uh, and should be the ultimate goal of human civilization. But if Aparad against Hari, Guru, and Vaishnav infect the heart, then, then we digress from the spiritual path and are dragged onto the miserable path of hedonism, of Adharma. I bet it says Adharma. I'm guessing. <laughs> Bharat Varsha, India, is an expansion of the spiritual world, Vaikuntha, where gods and goddesses comp um, compete to take birth as humans a birth that offers the best opportunity for association with Vaishnavas and a service connection with Krishna. That precious gift is destroyed by Aparad and one's life becomes a burden. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended from the innermost quarter of the transcendental abode of Sri Radha and Krishna to remind us of our actual identities as their eternal servitors. But if we allow our innate nature to become diverted from serving Radha and Krishna, becoming slaves of illusion, the rare opportunity offered by the human birth is wasted. Oh, the end. My dear devotees, I humbly beg all of you, please do not commit Vaishnav Aparad. Devotees, please hear this most secret of all secrets. Sorry. Yeah, okay. The most secret, right? Please hear the most, yeah, whatever. This most secret of all secrets. The most precious possession is divine love for Sri Radha and Krishna. And the greatest suffering is the separation from Krishna's devotees. A lover of Krishna is the most exalted, liberated person. Ecstatically singing about the sublime pastimes of Radha and Krishna is the highest religion. The association of Krishna's devotees 
is the only real good for everyone. Krishna's transcendental name, qualities, beauty, and pastimes are the only subjects worthy of constant remembrance. And the lotus feet of Shri, Shri, of Shri Radha and Krishna are the only things we should worship and adore. The only place worth living is Vrindavan. There, Radha and Krishna revel in their divine dance of love, the Ras Lila. The eternal pastimes of Radha and Krishna are the only topics worth hearing. The singing of the holy names of the divine couple is the highest form of kirtan and the most exalted form of worship. This is real culture and should be the ultimate goal of human civilization. Vaishnav Sarva Bhuma Shri Shiva Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj. Should we, let's read this, uh, this little biography of Shri Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj. Om Vishnu Pad Shri Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj, present, sorry, founder, president, and acharya of Shri Gopinath Goriamat. In the village of, Gunga, uh, of Ganga Nandapur, district Jeshore, now Bangladesh, Tridandi Swami Shishimad Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj appeared as a son of Shri Tari, sorry if I'm getting this wrong, Tari Nicharan, oh, Tarani, Tarani Charan, Tarani Charan Chakrabarti and Srimati Ram Rangini Devi. Born October 8, 1989, 1989. <laughs> Must be 1889? Yeah, no, 1889 is too far ago. Uh, but anyways, this, this, um, I don't know what year this is supposed to be. But um, born October 8, because I'm born in 1989, <laughs> during the auspicious hour of Brahma Mohurta, he was called Sri Pramod Bhushan Chakravarti. Along with the study, oh wait, no, it must be 1889. I don't know, I went for his 100th Vyas Puja in 1997. I'm terrible at math though. Um, anyhow. Along with the study of Sanskrit, Pramod Bhushan was engaged in worshipping family deities of Shishi Radha Gopina. His reverent service mood was evident even as a young man. Once he forgot to cover the Lord with a blanket on a winter night. That night, he shivered uncontrollably with chills and fever. The Lord appeared in his dream and showed him that he was without his blanket. The young Pramod Bhushan woke up and only after he covered the Lord did, his, did the fever subside. Pramod Bhushan, was com uh, Pramod Bhushan completed his education in Jessore then went to Kolkata where he attended Bang Bangabasi College, graduating with honors in chemistry. Interesting. In 1970, sorry, in 1917, he met his guru Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur. From the first meeting, an eternal bond was made. Sri Pramod Bhushan accepted Prabhupada in his heart as his eternal master. His strong attachment to spiritual life brought him regularly to his guru's lectures at the Kolkata ashram of Sri Gaudiya Mat. In 1923, on the holy occasion of Sri Krishna Janmashtami, he surrendered at his guru's lotus feet and simultaneously took Harinam and Brahman initiations. He became known as Sri Pranaban, uh, Pranaban, uh, pra, Pranabananda Brahmachari, a full-fledged member of Sri Gaudiya Mat. Pranabhananda's service, at, uh, Pranabhananda's service attitude was so exemplary that soon Prabhupada Srila Saraswati Thakur established him as the editor of Gaudiya Mat publications. Pranabhananda Brahmachari synopsized uh, Srila Saraswati Thakur's lectures, elaborated on them, and with Prabhupada's approval, they were, they were published in various periodicals, including the only daily spiritual newspaper, Dainik Nadia Prakash. In recognition of his scholarship, Saraswati Thakur honored him with the title Sri Pranavananda Brahmachari Mahopadeshak Pratna Vidyalankar. 
Shilapuri Maharaj served in close association with his guru for 13 years. Srila Prabhupada requested that Sri Pranabhananda Brahmachari accept Tridandi Sanyas. Humbly considering himself unfit, he declined. At the time of Prabhupada's Aprakat Lila, Sri Pranabhananda Brahmachari held his guru's lotus feet to his chest so that they might remain forever enthroned in his heart. After Srila Prabhupada's disappearance, Sri Pranabhananda Brahmachari Mahapadeshak Pratna Vidyalankar began extensive traveling and preaching. In 1942, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur appeared in a dream and gave his divine order that Sri Pranavananda accept Tridandi Sanyas. Sanyas initiation and the Danda were given by his godbrother Sri Bhakti Gora Vaikanas Maharaj in Champahati Shishi Gora Gadadhar Temple. For more than seven years, Tridandi Swami Bhakti Pumod Puri Goswami Maharaj served as the head pujari and temple president of Shishi Yogapit, the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, discovered by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. During that time, the deities were internally urging him to take up scriptural research and deeper meditation. He moved to a humble cottage on the banks of the Ganga in Kalna, living, living with his beloved deities, Shishi Radha Gopina. I need to go to that temple. Rupmanjari is telling me about it. She sent me pictures also. During that time, the king of, of Bardaman, or Bordwan, I don't know, a, west, uh, dis, a district of West Bengal, was extremely impressed with his saintly character, and on the appearance day of Sri Radhika, 1958, he offered his large temple to Srila Puri Maharaj. He engaged in service at that temple for several years. Later, his godbrother Srila Bhakti Dait Madhav Goswami Maharaj requested that Guru Maharaj come to his mat to edit spiritual periodicals and books. Guru Maharaj entrusted the temple in Kalna to his younger brother and went to Kolkata to take up his new service. Additionally, His Holiness Om Vishnupad Chidandi Swami, Sri Bhakti Dait Madhav Goswami Maharaj, requested that he take full charge of his monthly magazine, Sri Chaitanya Vani, as president of the editorial board. He also became editor-in-chief of the monthly magazine, Sri Gaudiya, published from Sri Chaitanya Mat Mayapur. At the age of 97, Srila Puri Maharaj continues to fulfill this role with great care and devotion. Presently, Guru Maharaj is the senior most living disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Additionally, he was the lifelong intimate associate of his divine grace, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj, who he, considered to, uh, who he considered the benign guardian of the celestial wealth of Srila Rupa Goswami. And he also had a very intimate connection with my Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Vrigyan Kesha Goswami Maharaj. You can read this beautiful, beautiful article that he wrote. It's in the Kripti Ratna book. It's one of my favorite articles in the book. Srila Puri Maharaj was well known as the best kirtan leader in the early days of Sri Gaudiya Math, and often sang on radio programs. <clears throat> he is well known for his extensive knowledge and meticulous practice of deity worship and installation. He installed our, our temple, our Rup Sanatan Gaudiya Math. There's pictures of his during the installation ceremony of Amat there. <clears throat> his, service to Shila, uh, his service to Shila Saraswati Thakur, installing deities in new temples, made him known as Pujapad. In addition to his high position and qualifications, many are attracted to, to Trudandi Swami Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj's divine personality. He emanates sweetness and love. He is seen as our well-wishing guide to the spiritual domain. The opening of the Gopinath Gaudiya Mat during the 1989 Gaur Purnima Titi provided a doorway to that spiritual domain. Our humble prayer is that we may our humble prayer is that we may always be situated at his holy lotus feet, which are which are our only access to the predecessor acharyas and their divine teachings. We pray that they may be engaged in the eternal service of Sri Guru and Goranga and Sri Sri Radha Gopinath under the divine direction of Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj. Jai Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai.
Okay, it is 1898. <laughs> Rupmanjali, he used to tease you about your chemistry studies. Oh yeah, you, you mentioned that, that you were, you were studying chemistry. That is so funny. <laughs> Alright, so anybody have any suggestion of what kirtan I should sing now? Otherwise, I'll choose something if nobody gives a suggestion. I'll give you 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, nobody's suggesting anything, so I am just going to pick something. Wait, what's Ranjali writing? Shushila. Okay, I'm choosing something. What should we sing? Kirtan I really like is Ohe Premara Takura Gora. Let's find that. Let me type it up. Ohe Premara Takura. It's a bit long though, but it's really beautiful. And it has the glories of Shikuru in it. Oh, come on. Oh, it must be exclamation mark. Yes. Unless somebody came up with a suggestion. No. Oh, what are they singing in the temple? Um, they're singing uh, the Shayan Arti. The nighttime RT. Oops, my screen isn't sharing. Oops. Now they're singing Mahamantra. Okay. Oh, God. I did this before. Shoot. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. I make this big so you can read it. Okay. O oh, Gore, Lord of Prem, what shall I tell you of the sufferings of my life, O oh, Master? I have lost my true self. What more shall I say, O oh, Lord, after so long, to speak of the purpose for which you brought me to this world? I become weary with lamentation and sorrow. Attachment to bhajan of you has not awakened within me. I am intoxicated by the mundane and the illusory. And my intelligence is always wicked. By remaining near sense enjoyers, I have become just like them. Who am I? Why have I come here? My mind never ponders these questions. Sometimes enjoying and sometimes renouncing. My mind only dances. What's going on? My mind only dances in, be, in be, uh, be, beguilement. Is that how you say that? Beguilement. How do you say that? Anyways, it doesn't matter. I never contemplate what my outcome will be. I do not even go near the devotees of Hari. All the inauspicious symptoms of one who opposes Hari are within me. By Sri Guru's grace, my illusory dream has been broken. I now understand that you alone are a mine. I'm oh, sorry. I now understand that you alone are mine, and that your associates are my greatest friends in this prison house of material existence. I love this verse. By Sri Guru's grace, my illusory dream has been broken. I now understand that you alone are mine and that your associates are my greatest friends in this prison house of material existence. I will not worship anything besides the feet of your, lotus, of your devotees. I have taken shelter of the crimson soles of your lotus feet. O oh Lord, rescue me from Maya's entangling net by pulling the servant by the hair. Jagai and Madai were such great sinners Yet still you delivered them. By that I have realized, O Lord of Prem, that you also deliver the sinful. 
I am devoid of bhakti, wretched, and destitute. Please place both of your lotus feet upon the head of this offender. At your beautiful feet, which instill fearlessness, I take eternal shelter. Chalanaya 
शरणे चिरा शरण Sachinanda, 
I'm just seeing this message now. Sorry, Rupmanji, I missed that. You were just a few seconds too late, I guess. Anyhow, we can sing that another time. Adi Jagan. Jai Shishi Guru Guranga Gandharvika Giri Dhari Shishi Radha Vinod Vihari Juki Jai Shri Govinda Gopinath Maran Mohan Juki Jai Nitala Pavishta Mishnapar Ashrata Rashata Shmaj Shila Bhakti Varanta Narayan Gosai Maharaj Shila Guru Dev Ki Jai Nitala Pavishta Mishnapar Ashrata Rashata Shmaj Shila Bhakti Varanta Vaman Gosai Maharaj Ki Jai Nitala Pavishta Mishnapar Ashrata Rashata Shmaj Shila Bhakti Varanta Sai Maharaj Shila Prabhupar Ki Jai Nitala Pavishta Mishnapar Ashrata Rashata Shmaj Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Gosai Prabhupada ki jai. Nitala Pavishta Maha Bhagavat Shila Goksha Ras Babaji Maharaj ki jai. Nitala Pavishta Shila Satcharanda Bhakti Vinod Thakur ki jai. Nitala Pavishta Vaishnava Sarva Bhoma Shila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj ki jai. Shri Rupanu Gauriya Guru Varga ki jai. Nitala Pavishta Mishnupar Ashtadara Shatashmar Shila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj ki jai. Shri Rup Sanatan Bhatta Raghunath Shri Jeeva Gopal Bhatta Dash Raghunath Shada Gosai Prabhu ki jai. Shri Sarup Damada Rai Ramanandari Shri Gaur Parashad Vrinda ki jai Nama Chai Shri Hai Ras Thakur ki jai Prem Se Kahur Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai Shri Kshetra Mandala Gaur Mandala Vraja Mandala Mathura Vrindavan Dham ki jai Sarva Abhishtra Pradhatta Giri Raj Maharaj ki jai Shri Radha Kunya Shama Kun ki jai Shri Muna Devi Ganga Devi ki jai Shri Tulsi Maharani Vrinda Devi ki jai Shri Bhakti Devi ki jai Shri Purnamasa Yoga Maya ki jai Shri Gopeshwar Mahadev ki jai, Shri Harinam Sankirtan ki jai, Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda ki jai, Samagata Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Shri Nithai Gaur Primanande Hari Hari Bo. Vrindai Tulsi Devai Priyaya Kesha Vashacha, Krishna Bhakti Pradadevi Sattavataya Namonamaha Vansha Kalpaturu Vyashtra, Kripa Sandhu Bhyaya Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namonamaha. Thunderbolt pronouns. Thanks for joining in this uh, this program. Oh, um, this book. Where is the book? Did it come to me? Oh, yeah. Jai Shri Vaishnav. In Bengali, it's just called Vaishnava Parad. The book Vaishnava Parad Ki Jai. The Heart of Krishna Ki Jai. Shila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Um, so tomorrow, I uh, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday. So I want to read um, an article by Shila Bhakti Vinod Thakur called Vaishnav Ninda, also on the topic of um, Vaishnava Parad, and um, and then after that, um, on Friday, I think I might uh, not be available for one day for reading. And then, and then we'll see what happens after that. <laughs> All right, Adi Thank you so much for joining. Jai Shri Radha.